All right, so now we're in the top five. So we're going to kind of deep dive into, uh, into these a little bit more um, and, and, and spend a little bit more time uh, trying to go over some of this stuff. Uh, as Jeremiah mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, uh, please bear with us. We had to become experts in a lot of really tough technical research and try to boil them down into sub 10 minutes a piece. So uh, these were each Black Hat worthy talks, if not Black Hat talks that had their dedicated hours. So we're going to fly by. So uh, the first one is uh, highlighting weaknesses in the RC4 algorithm. Uh, so the list of researchers at the bottom uh, were, were part of the Royal Holloway University of London research team. Um, they actually have two different techniques on this list. We'll get to the other one later. Uh, but yeah, hat tip to them. This is, this is really cool stuff. So just some background real quick. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, TLS and SSL, uh, it's the main uh, uh, encryption used on any secure transmissions over the web today. The most popular being HTTPS, but uh, you know also secure email type transmissions, IMAP, POP, uh, SMTP use the same protocol. Uh, so TLS can support a number of different algorithms used in the encryption. Uh, which includes RC4, which we're going to talk about, but things like CBC that we've talked about in past years are also options. And each algorithm has a number of cipher suites available to it to, uh, to change the behavior slightly. And slide for you again, just dense content. I'm not going to read this off, but this is just uh, the, the highlights of what RC4 is. The important points here are that the, the beginning parts, uh, bits of this RC4 uh, stream, and we're going to focus on the first 256 bits, bits in this attack, are uh, supposed to be padded with uh, some random bytes and then Zord and, and all sorts of other stuff to actually encrypt it. But that randomness is what we're going to focus on. Uh, it turned out to have some biases uh, with a large enough data set, uh, very large data set, we're actually able to uh, randomness and, and read the plain text. So how popular is RC4? So I think this survey was done uh, last year. Uh, in the last two years, uh, approximately 50% of uh, sites protected with TLS uh, were using the RC4 algorithm and some combination of its cipher suites. So in past years, things like beast uh, attacks were on uh, the CBC-based algorithm, and some of the recommendations for mitigation were actually to move to RC4 algorithms which turned into not be the best suggestion because of the research that we're talking about today. So the researchers had two different attack scenarios. Uh, the first one uh, required m uh, multiple different sessions. And when I say multiple, that's, that's stretching the word multiple. It requires a ton of different sessions. And when I say session, you should uh, hear that as TLS handshakes. This is multiple TLS connections uh, starting over uh, being killed at the end of the connection and started over again. So, again, like I mentioned before, this is uh, focusing on the initial 256 bytes of an RC4 encrypted key stream. Uh, so, reliably, the researchers with uh, 2 to the 30th power different TLS connections with the same plain text uh, sent over it all of those times were able to recover the first 220 of 256 uh, bytes in plain text even though they were encrypted with, uh, with TLS. Uh, so this, again, was due to the, the randomness not being as random as it thought. Uh, the, the discrepancy in the 36 bytes there uh, is uh, some, some byte padding that, that, that can't be decrypted. So already, from, uh, from the, the, since the research was born, uh, they actually improved that 2 to the 30 to 2 to the 24 for specific bytes, not the entire 220, but for specific ones. So that's the difference between 1 billion TLS connections and 16 million TLS connections. So uh, it's getting more realistic uh, as time goes on, right? So a real-world scenario where the same plain text would be sent over and over again or could be forced to be sent over and over again uh, would something be like uh, session cookies that are secured uh, via this encryption. So with just a little bit of JavaScript uh, from a malicious server onto someone's client, you can force that client browser to send the same request over and over again with the encrypted cookies. If you can send it enough times with, uh, with and, <clears throat> and the site is using RC4, you're actually going to be able to steal those session cookies since they are in the first 256 bytes of an HTTP request. Um, but again, this is 
uh, unrealistic when it comes to the fully reliable uh, 1 billion uh, TLS requests. But it gets more realistic as you know more information uh, going into the attack. So that's worst case scenario. You know nothing about it, about the encrypted request. Uh, you're going to need about a billion TLS handshakes. But this is where math goes from our enemy to our friend. Uh, if we actually know things about the encrypted text, we can reduce that time needed. So say the cookie that you were trying to steal you knew was Base64 encoded, which is a fairly popular thing to do to cookies. That's, that really, really reduces the character set uh, needed to be uh, watching for in the plain text, which will help reduce the math and start to make this attack slightly more practical. Right now, it's still not very practical, but slightly more practical. So the second attack in this research, uh, the main difference in this attack is that you don't need to redo the TLS handshake uh, and redo the TLS connection every time. So this takes a, uh, a ton more actual requests, so it's 10 times to the 30th encryptions needed for the same piece of plain text, but uh, because the TLS handshake is not needed every time, it becomes slightly more uh, efficient. This is really not, this is feasible, it's theoretical, it's been proven uh, to be related. It is, it's not necessarily practical in the wild just yet, but if history serves us, uh, that's just going to prove to get more and more practical as, as time goes on, as computers get faster, and as the attackers hone their techniques here. So this weakness has been proven. It's just a matter of time of the hardware and the research catching up. So uh, you know, we're suggesting people stop, start migrating off of RC4 now, since it's not an easy process, and move to more, uh, newer encryption models that are preferably authenticated encryption modes. Um, in RC4, you can pad that, that initial 36 bit that I was talking about out of the 256 bits, if you can pad that more, uh, you're going to, to limit the, uh, the exposure area. And if you, uh, what's the other thing? If, you're, if, if you start to, uh, oh yeah, if you can limit the number of times, this is pretty obvious, right? So, uh, you know, if it takes a, a couple million requests right now, or even up to a billion requests right now that the cookies need to be sent over a certain, uh, uh, time frame that you just need to limit that. I mean, that, that should set off all sorts of alarms right now, but if you limited that to a couple hundred or a couple thousand, you would never really affect usability and you would, uh, you would squash this attack uh, for now.